Welcome back. We're doing the Gaussian mixture model, EM for the Gaussian mixture model, and we're getting close. We've just about we're just about to get it. So we were down here computing the expected value of ZIK, and we got we we checked back up with with our model, and we found that the probability that ZIK equals one is alpha k, and ZIK, the kth coordinate of this vector ZI. It's a Bernoulli random variable. It only takes values 0 and 1. And so the expected value of a Bernoulli random variable is just the probability that it's equal to 1. So that means the expected value, expected value of zik equals alpha k. So we can use that down here. So let's let's use that this equals the sum over i of alpha k and obviously this doesn't depend on i and there's i and i is going from one to n so this is n times alpha k all right fair enough that was nice and easy now let's think about this side so once again we have linearity of expectation, we can move this through, simplify things a little bit. Let me just put, let me just put the given little x here, rather than keeping on writing capital X equals little x. And zik, zi, the vector zi, is independent. By assumption, these, these draws are, are, I, are iid. So the ith z is independent of all the other of, of the x's other than xi. So this is equal to the conditional expectation given xi. And this is exactly the thing going back up. So let's go back to up, up to our model. This conditional expectation. This is the thing that we computed here. Because this indicator function is precisely equal to zk. Or if this was zi, this would be zik. It's it's one. The indicator is one when this is true, and and that's the same thing as the kth component. Component. So this conditional expectation of zk or zik given x is equal to this thing. And this we can compute directly. We know x, or in this case, it's going to be like xi. Xi. If this was zik. We know, we know what the x is, we know xi, and we know what all the parameters now are. These are not the theta, so back down here. This is under, this is the conditional expectation under theta zero. And we're assuming that we know theta zero. So that's the key, that's the first sort of key thing that's going to make this work, uh, that, that makes life easier when we're doing EM, is that we're assuming that we know this theta zero. So that's a key point right there. Since we know theta zero now, we can just compute this. This just you know analytically, because these are the parameters. This would be like you know, the theta zero k or or whatever mu zero k c zero k. These are the parameters that belong to theta zero. All right. So I think hopefully that was clear. So we can just compute this. So this is just some number that's a function of all those theta zero and all. And um, let's just call that number. Let's just call that number. Let's write it over here maybe. Let's call that number. So, well, I'll just put it in here. Let's call that number R I K. It depends on I because it depends on X I. This is actually a function of xi, and so this is, maybe I'll write rik is a function of theta zero, xi, and, um, and k. But let's just abbreviate it by rik. All right, so we can compute that. We get those numbers. And let's call this sum something. Let's call this n sub k, because it doesn't depend on i. All right, so now we've got 
we can solve this, right? We can solve this for part of theta, at least. We, we don't get all of theta yet, but we get part of theta. We get alpha k. Alpha k, remember, is, is part of theta. And so alpha k equals nk divided by n. And our first step, first, first step is complete. Okay, so that was nice. Now let's do do. The next sufficient statistic let's tackle is, let's do this one. This one looks relatively easier. This one's a matrix and this one's only a vector. So maybe this will be easier. So we have sum over i, z, i, k, x, i. So once again, we're going to have, um, oh, sorry, we're going to have this sort of expression that we need to solve for part of theta. Sum over i, z, i, k, x, i, given x equal to the expected value of, again, sum over i, z, i, k, x, i. And let's do this part first again. Actually, let's do this part first. I think this part's easier on this one. So linearity of expectation, expectation moves through. X, i is given, it's part of x. So that pops out and we get the conditional expectation, z, i, k given x times x, i. And just like before, this is just depends on x, i. And so this should be, that's a capital Z there. That's not clear. That's a, it's a random variable Z. And um, this is just the same thing as before. This is what we defined as these R, I, Ks. So this equals sum over I, R, I, K, X, I. All right, nice and easy. Okay, now this one's a little bit more complicated because we're taking the expectation over both X and Z. But it's not too bad. We can, we can do it. So we'll move the expectation through and we can use the law of iterated expectations. Sometimes they call it the expected value equals the expected value of the conditional expectation. Z I K X I that should be sorry. That should be a capital X in there. It's a random X random x, not not the given x. x i given, and now let's make it given, I think we want to make it given that z, given z. Sorry, that's a very crazy z. z i k. Okay, so what is this? So let's figure out what's going on here. This conditional expectation This expectation on the outside, it's the probability that z i k equals one times the expectation here given z i k equals one, plus the probability that z i k equals zero times the conditional expectation given that z i k equals zero. But given that z i k equals zero, this is just zero. So we don't need to worry about that one at all. And we just need to think about what is the conditional expectation z i k x i given that z i k equals one and that of course when this is when it's one that's just one and so we just get the conditional expectation x i given z i k equals one okay so what is this well let's go back up to our model this is the, the so we want to think about the conditional distribution of xi given zi. So back up to the model here. Oh, that's not the model. Here's the model. Given zi k equals 1. So if zi k equals 1, then zi equals ek. Right? The ith component is 1. 
So given that, we, that's what, exactly what we've defined. We've de defined x to be normally distributed with mean mu, mu xi to be normally distributed with mean mu k and covariance ck. So the expectation, the conditional expectation, is just the conditional mean. It's just the expectation of, of this conditional distribution. And so it's just mu k. So that's easy. That is mu k. Very nice. Very nice indeed. And so this thing becomes, I put like, what did I put? What, what should I put? I'll put this, something like that. This equals sum over i. Now I said it was this expectation. We take the probability that zik equals one times this conditional expectation and the probability so maybe I'll just write probability z i k equals 1 times mu k and the probability that z i k equals 1 we figured out before where did we that was just this um, the same thing as this the expected value of z i k since it's a Bernoulli random variable and so that's just alpha k. So this is just uh, this is just sum over i alpha k mu k. And since we're solving all of these equations simultaneously, then we can use this result from this earlier set of equations that had to hold. So we can plug in alpha k here. This equals well, this doesn't depend on i, so this becomes n times alpha k. Sorry, this is a this is a crazy staircase of equalities. N alpha k mu k alpha k equals n k over n, so the n cancels. We get n k mu k, and pulling all of that together, we get. Now we have all these. This is equal to this. So if we solve for the thing we wanted or the part of the you know part of this theta vector which was mu k we get mu k equals this thing divided by n k so it's 1 over n k times the sum over i r i k x i all right so we're getting one, we got one more step down, step two. And that has a very nice sort of form. This looks actually very much like the, the k-means, uh, the k-means algorithm, if you, if you remember what that looked like. And this is, this is also a very nice, pleasing sort of expression because here we're counting, well, we're not, we're not really counting. It's, you can sort of, interpret so maybe I'll make a little aside we got one more to do we have number three to do which is the matrix here and that's going to give us the covariance matrix but let me make uh, I'm gonna have to do that in another video because I'm almost out of time here but let me make a, a remark about briefly the interpretation of this this zik the probability that zik equals uh, or just so probability that this equals x that's equal to this the expectation i mean the probability sorry the probability that zik equals one given x i equals this expectation and if we think back up here to our model think back up here what that means what does this conditional probability mean that means if we're given some x let's say let me make it like a big i don't know maybe x is 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 here that's x that's x and the probability that z i k equals 1 given x i is in some sense so people refer to it as the responsibility it's going to be more for this one because it's closer well I mean at least in this picture it's going to be higher for this one than this one the probability that uh, of of that z i k equals that given x is higher okay i have to stop uh we'll continue this one more time all right see ya